all religions teach the same set of moral values with only minor variations, this is a common claim you hear from people. A factual understanding of the central doctrines of Jesus and Muhammad reveals superficial similarities at best. A deep understanding of these teachings, reveals fundamental differences, and that the teachings are often very different. As a result, the actions that stem from these beliefs are also different. In this video, we will examine sin in Christianity and Islam. If you are not already subscribed to this channel please do. And press the notification icon to be notified when a new video is uploaded. What is the source of sin, according to Christianity and Islam? In Islam, the origin of sin is Allah. Islam claims that humans were created in a state of equilibrium, sinless at birth, Surah 1678, and with pure Islamic faith as reported in Bukhari, Volume 8, Hadith number 597. As narrated Abu Huraira, Allah's Apostle said, No child is born but has the Islamic faith, but its parents turn it into a Jew or a Christian. It is as you help the animals give birth. Do you find among their offspring a mutilated one before you mutilate them yourself? The people said, O oh Allah's Apostle. What do you think about those, of them, who die young? The Prophet said, Allah knows what they would have done, were they to live. The Quran makes it perfectly clear that no person is really free to choose good or evil, Allah leads people astray. As found in Surah 7 to 178, whomsoever Allah guides, he is the guided one, and whomsoever he sends astray, those. They are the losers. This is also reported in several passages of the Quran. Such as in Surah 7 to 179, Surah 1331, Surah 95 to 4 to 5, Surah 4 to 142, Surah 3957. Thus, in Islam, Adam did not bring sin into the world. Indeed Allah had destined Adam to sin. 40 years before he created him. See Bukhari, Volume 8, Hadith number 611 and Surah 951. In Christianity, the origin of sin is Satan. Humans are believed to be born sinners by virtue of Adam's sin. We inherited a sinful nature as you read in the letter of Paul to the Romans in chapter 5 verse 12. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned. But what is sin? In Islam, sin is sometimes the intention of the heart, except unbelief, see Surah 33-5 and Bukhari Volume 1, Hadith number 1. At other times it is only wrong actions, Bukhari Volume 8, Hadith number 498. The Quran recognizes that all living persons are inherently good, and it is their actions and devotion to Allah that enables them to obtain salvation. Even demons are capable of regaining salvation, Ibn Kathir 5571 and Al-Tabari 2365. In Christianity, sin includes actions, but is primarily wrong thoughts, desires and inclinations, and rebellious defiance of God, as these are the source of your actions. As Luke 6.45 states, the good person out of the good treasure of his heart produces good, and the evil person out of his evil treasure produces evil, for out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. In Christianity, there is no changing standard regarding sin, the standard is always God's holiness. Be holy for I am holy, Leviticus 11.45, I the Lord do not change, Malachi 3.6, and all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23. For example, in Christianity, adultery is completely forbidden, Matthew 5 27 to 28. Whereas, in Islam, limited prostitution is permitted, Surah 24 33, 4 24, 33 37. Unlike Christianity, Islam does not consider all sins equally wrong. Sins are divided into different categories but are most usefully separated into greater and lesser sins. There are several lists of great sins, albeit conflicting, which can be summarized as 1. To join partners in worship with Allah, 2. To practice sorcery, 3. Murder without just cause, 4. To charge usury, money lent at high interest, 5. To consume the property of an orphan, 6. To be a coward in battle, 7. To be undutiful to one's parents, 8. To give a false witness, 9. To kill your child lest he should share your food with you, 10. To commit illegal sexual intercourse with the wife of your neighbor, or adultery, 11. Alcohol and, 12. Gambling. Even though these are listed as great sins, they are obviously not seen as very serious according to Muhammad's teachings. Let's consider some examples of these teachings. As seen above, though adultery is forbidden, prostitution and temporary marriage are permissible, Surah 2433, and, 
Surah 424. Thus, in Islam, the seriousness, and even the definition of sin vary. Consider another example, alcohol is forbidden on earth, Surah 590 and 91, but in Islamic paradise, alcohol is allowed, Surah 5618, 765 and 7834. On earth, Islam forbids more than four wives, exempting temporary wives, and concubines, but in Islamic paradise, you have the luxury of 72 virgins. Surah 56 22-40, also see Ibn Kathir on 55 72. Lying is generally forbidden, but the doctrine of al taqiyya legal right of Muslims to deceive non-Muslims permits lying. Muhammad also believed that lying was acceptable and said in Bukhari, Volume 4, Hadith number 361, Allah willing, if ever I take an oath to do something, and later on I find that it is more beneficial to do something different, I will do the thing which is better, and give expiation for my oath. Allah had taught in the Quran that, Muslims are not bound by their oaths, Surah 66 2. Lying is permitted because Allah can deceive. In fact, Allah calls himself the greatest of deceivers, Surah 354, 830. By the way, that should be an attribute of Satan. Consider another example. Murder, even though it is a great sin, is actually permitted. The justification for this is to prevent or remove al-fitna, opposition, or disbelief. See Surah 2 191, 2 217 and Surah 839. Muslims are even commanded to slay unbelievers if they do not convert to Islam, Surah 9 to 5. Thus, the great sin of murder is commanded if unbelievers do not convert or when al-fitna exists. No Muslim should be put to death for murdering an unbeliever, Bukhari, Volume 4, Hadith number 283. Muhammad also permitted sorcery in Sahih Muslim, Book 26, Hadith number 5449, 5452, 5456 although it is listed as a great sin. In keeping with this attitude to the great sins, Muhammad forbade children from obeying or even being near their parents, if their parents were unbelievers, Surah 923. Despite all these irregularities, Allah sought to emphasize the necessity of sin when his messenger said, By him in whose hand is my life, if you were not to commit sin, Allah would sweep you out of existence and he would replace you by those people who would commit sin and seek forgiveness from Allah, and he would have pardoned them. Sahih Muslim Volume 4, Book 37, Hadith number 6621 and 6622. This shows how serious Allah regards sin. If you do not sin, Allah will wipe you out and replace you with people who will sin. It is then incumbent upon Muslims to sin, so that they will repent and seek Allah. This is a corrupt view of God because it says that God will destroy those who do not sin, God will not destroy the righteous. It is also a corrupt view of Satan because when Satan leads humanity into sin, he is actually saving them from God's destruction. Satan becomes the Islamic savior. This whole way of thinking is just completely corrupt. Sometimes one wonders if the smart Muslims actually think this issue out for themselves. How then, can Muslims get into heaven? Allah weighs their sins and good deeds in a balance, Surah 7 8 and 9, 21 47, 23 101 to 103. If the good deeds outweigh the bad deeds, then entry is assured. To aid a Muslim in this venture, Allah proclaims, those who avoid great sins, accept the small sins, verily, your Lord is of vast forgiveness, see Surah 431, and, Surah 53 32. Good deeds remove sinful deeds, Surah 539, 11 114, Sahih Bukhari, Volume 1. Hadith number 504. Punishment now, means no punishment after death, Bukhari, Volume 1, Hadith number 17. Additionally, every letter of the Quran that is read in Arabic, accredits the reader with 10 good deeds recorded, at Tirmidhi, Volume 3, Hadith number 2327. Good deeds can be multiplied many times, up to 700 times, Surah 440, 6 to 160, Bukhari, Volume 1, Hadith number 40, and are easily obtained. Bukhari, Volume 4, Hadith number 112, 514, Volume 8, Hadith number 335 and Hadith number 507. Reciting the Confession of Faith is recorded as 10 good deeds, at Tirmidhi, number 308. All this gives the impression that sin is easily forgiven and seems to convey the certainty of entry into heaven. However, Muhammad, under Allah's inspiration, revealed that good deeds will never get you into heaven as seen in Bukhari, Volume 7, Hadith number 577 and Volume 8, Hadith number 474. For Allah may not forgive you, Surah 4 116. 
The last rightly guided caliph said, I swear to Allah that I do not feel safe from Allah's deceit even if one of my feet is already in paradise as seen in Khalid Muhammad Khalid's successors of the Apostle. In summary, as we have seen, sin is not a serious issue in Islam, and even great sins are forgiven easily. Christianity, however, never changes the standard, and forgiveness is never obtained by doing good works. It is the heart and mind that needs to be changed. In Christianity, Forgiveness of sin is only available through the atoning death of Jesus Christ, Islam forbids atonement, Surah 4 112, and 1715, etc. The God of the Bible and the God of Islam too often have different standards regarding holiness. Allah has an arbitrary standard and requires Muslims to sin, Yahweh, Jehovah, requires perfection of heart, mind, soul and body, Matthew 5 48. They can never be contaminated by sin and still enter heaven without atonement by the blood of the Lord Jesus. Only faith in the righteousness of Christ offers forgiveness now and a certain hope of eternity in heaven. With all this said, it is important to note the statement of the last rightly guided Caliph Abu Bekr who says, By Allah, I would not feel safe from Allah's deception even if one of my feet was in paradise. In fact, even Muhammad was not even sure of his own salvation as recorded in Surah 46 in verses 8 and 9. Or do they say, He has forged it? Say, If I have forged it, you have no power to help me against Allah. He knows very well what you are pressing upon, he suffices as a witness between me and you, he is the all-forgiving, the all-compassionate. Say, I am not an innovation among the messengers, and I know not what shall be done with me or with you. I only follow what is revealed to me, I am only a clear warner. Hence, a Muslim can never know whether or not Allah will, in the end, admit him into paradise. A Muslim who takes the Quran seriously, cannot have any assurance of salvation. Dear Muslim friends, if Muhammad is not even sure of his salvation, and if you cannot even be certain of your own salvation in Islam, why not turn to the God of the Bible who assures you of your salvation? If you choose the God of the Jews and Christians, you must read the scriptures of the Jews and Christians to know their God. Thank you for joining us this far. If you like what we do, please endeavor to support our work by subscribing to the channel. Also press the notification bell to be notified when a new video is uploaded.